All right, so we are literally only a couple weeks out from Joe Biden's trip to the Middle East, where he was going around and meeting with various foreign leaders from countries like Israel and the UAE, and even did that cute little fist bump with the brutal dictator of Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Salman, and already they are starting to reap some of the rewards from this meeting, and it's coming, surprise, surprise, in the form of weapons contracts. So here from Common Dreams, Brett Wilkins, he says, weeks after Biden fist bumps Saudi prince, the U.S. okays $5 billion dollars in Gulf arms sales. So a little bit of details here. They say peace campaigners on Tuesday decried the Biden administration's approval of more than $5 billion in missile sales to Saudi Arabia and the UAE, a move that came weeks after U.S. President Joe Biden visited the leaders of both countries despite pleas from human rights defenders. And they say the U.S. Department of Defense said that the U.S. State Department approved the $3.05 billion sale of 300 Raytheon Patriot MIM-104 E missiles to Saudi Arabia, as well as 96 Lockheed Martin Terminal High Altitude Area Defense missiles worth $2.25 billion for the UAE. So just to touch on a little bit of the uh, corrupt nature of the revolving door in our politics here in the United States, uh, notice that this weapon sale is coming from Raytheon, similar to the first uh, Saudi weapon seal sale that Biden did at the beginning of his administration. And uh, of course, the uh, Pentagon chief, the Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin here, who Biden appointed is literally uh, somebody who used to serve on the board of Raytheon Technologies. So a little bit of background on that here. They say after the election of former President Donald Trump in 2016, Austin left the public sector and assumed positions on the corporate boards of steel manufacturing giant Nucor Corporation, Tenet Healthcare, and United Technologies, which then merged with defense contractor Raytheon Company in 2020. And the merged corporation, Raytheon Technologies, is among the top five lobbying spenders in the defense sector and spent almost $11 million on lobbying in 2020. And Austin earned seven figures from the defense company, so over a million dollars at least uh, from his position at this weapons manufacturer. And they say Austin stepped down from all three board positions following his nomination in 2020. And prior to joining the Biden administration, Austin worked alongside fellow cabinet member Anthony Blinken at Pine Island Capital Partners, a private equity firm investing in defense companies that touted its access to Washington. So yeah, I mean, you got what you wanted there, right? I mean, this is, again, the revolving door of D.C. politics, but now you have two people, both the uh, Secretary of Defense and the Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, uh, who both have ties to the same exact investment firm that were literally profiting off of warfare and continued weapons contracts like the one that we're talking about right here. So again, just rampant corruption, but this is nothing unusual. This is baked within the U.S. political system and the military industrial complex, but I do think that it's kind of important sometimes to remind ourselves that even the people who are like the top figures in being in charge of running our military and diplomatic operations, they have direct ties and have direct financial incentives to continue promoting warfare, to continue promoting uh, these types of uh, contracts to brutal dictatorships. So they continue here saying that the move came just after an extension of a United Nations brokered truce in Yemen, where a U.S.-backed Saudi-led coalition that includes the UAE is waging a war against the Houthi rebels backed by the Iranian government. And the sales approval also comes days ahead of a virtual OPEC uh, ministerial meeting or ministerial meeting. So uh, just on this first point here, it's great that they have an extension of this uh, truce in Yemen. Absolutely fantastic because it is probably uh, the single worst humanitarian crisis facing the planet right now. So that's been a little bit of good news. Absolutely no thanks or credit to the United States in any way, shape or form. Uh, they didn't try to lead a peace deal. They were in fact uh, doing the exact opposite of that by continuing to support in every way imaginable with intelligence, with equipment, with weapon sales, with funding, uh, support the Saudi led offensive against the Yemeni people. So, uh, you know, understand that this was something that was led by the United Nations, not by the United States. And, uh, you know, also take that in context with Joe Biden initially when he was running in 2020, promised promising the American people that he was going to end all offensive arms sales uh, to the Saudi regime. And another piece of important context there is that the Saudi war in Yemen or the Saudi military appara apparatus in general would not exist or would not exist nearly in the capacity that it does right now if it wasn't for the support from the United Kingdom and from the United States. So if we wanted to actually end the war in Yemen for good, we could just simply stop supporting them militarily and that would pretty much do it. It's like upwards of over like 85% of their uh, weapons that they are using in this war coming directly from the U.S. and the U.K. So I think that's another piece of important uh, information there. But 
they continue citing uh saying that citing persistent houthi cross-border drone and missile attacks against saudi arabia the pentagon said that the proposed sales will quote support the foreign policy goals and national security objectives of the united states by improving the security of a partner country that is a force for political stability and economic progress in the Gulf region, okay? This guy, Lloyd Austin, this motherfucker, actually had the audacity to say that Saudi Arabia is a force for political stability, okay? Keep in mind, Saudi Arabia is like widely accepted and known to be one of, if not the single greatest exporters of terrorism in the Middle East, okay, and around the world, right? You know, I touched on this in my video the other day about, uh, you know, Joe Biden taking out this 950-year-old Al-Qaeda leader, but who was the country that was actively supporting, aiding, and abetting Al-Qaeda? It was, well, the United States first and foremost, but also Saudi Arabia, okay? That's where 15 of the 19 hijackers came from. And again, they have dramatic destabilization Stabilizing, um, destabilizing, destabilizing efforts going on in the region, not to mention just their ongoing genocide in uh, Yemen. I mean, we're talking about like hundreds of thousands of people that have died during this war in Yemen just alone. So the idea that you would say that Saudi Arabia of all countries on the face of the planet is a stabilizing figure is absolutely fucking wild. But they continue saying, however, anti-war vo anti -war voices argued that such sales will only prolong a seven-year war in which more than 300,000 people have been killed, millions have been displaced, and millions more face hunger and disease in what's widely considered to be the world's worst humanitarian crisis. So those are the basics of like the bullshit justifications that uh, the State Department, the Pentagon is coming up with for why they're doing this weapon sale. I think at the end of the day, it's pretty clear why, why they're doing this. Uh, from Joe Biden's perspective, it's a multitude of different reasons. Uh, number one, Saudi Arabia has been a historic partner in the region uh, because they are willing to go along with our economic, our oil, our uh, military objectives for the most part. Obviously, they've been kind of dicking us on oil recently, but um, Joe Biden's motivation for doing something like this is, in his words, he would like to say that it's because we want to uh, push back against Vladimir Putin and the Russian invasion of Ukraine. So we don't want to have to import any uh, supplies from uh, Russia. And so we're appealing to this partner in the region in order to get them to release more into the global reserves to tamp down tamp down those uh, oil and uh, gas prices. So that's probably what he would argue. But at the end of the day, Saudi Arabia has no fucking moral high ground on anybody, whether that's the United States or whether that's Russia or anybody else, okay? This is one of the most brutal and violent uh, dictatorships in the entire world, okay? So the idea that you would be, you know, getting on your hands and knees and basically begging them to release more oil and as if that's going to be in the broader best interests of the American people in continuing this alliance, it's absolute fucking nonsense. And on top of that, you also have to tie this in with the actual purpose of why Joe Biden was going to the Middle East on that trip in the first place, because it wasn't just to continue, uh, you know, fee fee feeding uh, money into the military industrial complex or anything like that. It was also having to do with the uh, potential peace deal continuations that were put in place by Jared Kushner under the uh, Trump administration. And I've talked about this in multiple videos so far, but Joe Biden is continuing full speed ahead with the Abraham Accords in the Middle East, okay? And basically, it's this bullshit so-called peace plan uh, that was originally touted to be like the solution to the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, completely excluded Palestinians from the table in this uh, in this uh, negotiations or in any capacity whatsoever with this deal. And really what it is, is just an economic and a military security alliance between the United States and a couple other Gulf states like Saudi Arabia and the UAE and Israel. And basically, basically using this as an opportunity to form some sort of an allied force against the power and influence of Iran in the region, okay? And so that's also coming at a time where not only is this peace deal not actually a peace deal, not only is it going to do uh, have a negative impacts on, uh, you know, U.S. national security, which is not even just my opinion, that's the former opinion of the current uh, Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken. He wrote an entire op-ed about how bullshit the uh, Trump so-called peace plan with the Abraham Accords was back under the Trump administration. Now he's completely changed his mind somehow. But on top of just the bullshit nature of that uh, Abraham Accords that Biden was continuing to push, you also have the added uh, aspect of this that he's not making any attempts whatsoever to continue with a revitalization, uh, revitalization of the Iran nuclear deal as well. So he's basically casting that completely aside and choosing to side with the Saudis and Israel and the UAE, all of, all of these uh, brutal either apartheid or um, you know dictatorial regimes in these countries, choosing to side with them over potentially uh, improving a diplomatic situation with Iran. And uh, his entire Middle East foreign policy is completely incoherent, again, even from the perspective of uh, somebody like Anthony Blinken, who is currently a, you know, war hawk and somebody who is sitting in the Biden administration as a secretary of uh, state right now. So... 
I mean, top to bottom, his entire Middle East plan is complete fucking nonsense. This weapon sale is just really like the icing on the cake to make it just that much worse that you're not only willing to go and fist bump this motherfucker Mohammed bin Salman, but you're also willing to continue selling him weapons that you know for an absolute fact are going to be used on innocent civilians, uh, whether in Yemen or otherwise. So, I mean, just absolutely unnecessary brutality coming from the Biden administration. It's a completely incoherent foreign policy agenda that he's laying out right now.